The Foreign Secretary was unambiguous. British intelligence has not tried to get around the law by taking information from United States surveillance programs that it would not have been able to get authorization for in this country. He didn't give any details, though, but then how could he? We shall have to take his word for it. But what has been revealed about the extent of American government snooping has astonished some people. Millions and millions of phone call and internet records have been looked at, according to a young man who's gone public. Mark Urban has this assessment. The legal and policy framework for surveillance is about as complex a subject as you could imagine. But Edward Snowden came to the view that mass harvesting of communications constituted an unacceptable invasion of people's privacy. The NSA specifically targets the communications of everyone. It ingests them by default. It collects them in its system and it filters them and it analyzes them and it measures them and it stores them for periods of time simply because that's the easiest, most efficient and most valuable way to achieve these ends. But the passage of a few days since the first revelations has also given us a clearer idea of the official justification for the National Security Agency's operations. That's especially true of gathering metadata, the who contacted whom for how long and where they were. Intelligence professionals defend this as a vital tool. This kind of trawling of massive data has to go on all the time anyway because that's where the intelligence is. It's concealed within the data. But the point about this is that we're looking for, or they are looking for, needles in haystacks. And in order to find the needles in the haystacks, they've got to be allowed to look at the haystack. For decades, phone companies and other service providers have been required by law to keep what used to be called billing information, metadata, and to make that available to government investigators. That's not the same thing as communication under the laws of several countries. Intercepting communications, the actual content of a phone call, email, or indeed an old-fashioned letter, requires a specific warrant. It isn't just that the law makes metadata easier to record. Searching the content requires an exponential increase in processing power and storing much of the world's daily communications would be a mind-boggling challenge. Even storing just the metadata on a large scale is a complex and costly operation for the NSA. It's just opened a new $2 billion facility in Utah as part of that operation. It may be legal, but doing it on this scale poses many questions. The metadata information collection program really does seem to be problematic. Uh, and so uh, illegal experts, Congress, uh, and perhaps the, the courts are going to need to look at this uh, with a fresh pair of eyes to see really if uh, the National Security Agency has been following the rules. The UK doesn't do intelligence on anything like the same level. It can rely on the NSA, of course, but even leaked figures of 197 reports sent to GCHQ by that organisation suggest Britain is doing things on a much smaller scale, which makes it easier to regulate and for ministers to insist they are acting legally. It has been suggested that GCHQ uses our partnership with the United States to get around UK law, obtaining information that they cannot legally obtain in the United Kingdom. I wish to be absolutely clear that this accusation is baseless. Any data obtained by us from the United States involving UK nationals is subject to proper UK statutory controls and safeguards. The US government says also that its requests for content from Google or AOL under the project codenamed PRISM are subject to legal warrants. For many in the US Congress, the key question is whether these operations involved routine large-scale surveillance of US citizens. As for the rest of the world, well, they're not quite so bothered about that. So if there are to be changes to the law as a result of these disclosures, it's most likely to be in tightening up of the rules for surveillance of US citizens. But surveillance of the rest of the world is likely to be carried on by the NSA on a massive scale. And we haven't had a, a leak uh, about 
uh, surveillance programs of this magnitude in, in some time. I mean, the story seems to have legs and the leaks just keep coming. Uh, so it is my hope that um, that Congress does uh, take a look at this, that they hold hearings. Uh, and if the law has been been broken, that people are held accountable for breaking the law. As for the man who made this public, he said that he expects the data empires and intelligence organizations that he has betrayed will not forgive him and that he accepts that life as he knew it is effectively over. This is something that's not our place to decide. The public needs to decide whether these programs and policies are right or wrong. And I'm willing to go on the record to defend the authenticity of them and say, I didn't change these. I didn't modify the story. This is the truth. This is what's happening. You should decide whether we need to be doing this. Well, now to discuss this, Major General Jonathan Shaw, who's a retired Army General who until last year was in charge of the Ministry of Defense's cybersecurity program, and Richard Aldrich, a professor of intelligence who's written a book on the UK intelligence agency GCHQ. He's currently leading a research project into what the public knows about the CIA. Now, were you surprised by the scale of surveillance disclosed in these uh, revelations? Uh, I wasn't surprised that it happened, but I think the sheer scale of it uh, even that, I suppose, when I think about it, doesn't really surprise me because the whole era now is one of big data and every corporation in the world is, is struggling to cope with this massive data. So the, and you need to take a lot of data in if you're going to analyse it. So, so I suppose thinking about it, it really shouldn't have taken us by surprise at all. What did you think? I think what it shows us is the intelligence agencies no longer own intelligence. The people who own, who own intelligence now are the supermarkets, the banks, the airlines, and that's a problem because government needs access to that information. It's interesting that uh, you know, people are prepared to share all sorts of bits of information about themselves with these companies, uh, but they're somehow alarmed if the government's keeping track of them. A, a former senior GCHQ officer said, there's something strange about a keyboard. If you put a human being in front of a keyboard and a screen, they'll do all sorts of weird things which they won't normally do in, in ordinary life. And there's a, there's a whole research project there. We didn't know this programme existed. Do you think we should have known, General? Uh, well, I think that's the old or debate. Or the Americans, uh, perhaps. Yeah, what should, what should be in the public domain and what shouldn't. Uh, I'm quite comfortable, but I suppose you could say I should be, uh, that, that we didn't know about it. But uh, So, no, I, I think we should be just comfortable uh, that it exists. I think the real surprise would have been if there hadn't been cooperation between GCHQ and the NSA. I think that would have been the real surprise. But when you've got a programme of this scale much bigger even than you knew if you say if you thought about it you'd have recognized it but you can't possibly be regularly scrutinized by due legal oversight can it uh well you'll have to wait for the inquiry on that because i'm not quite sure how that was done so uh, you'll have to you have to wait to see on that um i don't know what the tasking mechanism i don't know the details so we really have to wait to the details I think, but that it. scale i mean millions and millions of phone records alone and vast numbers of of internet pieces of information, you'd have to have somebody mm. or in a court just stamping, 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 stamping all day long in order well, to. Well, I think the record that we're hearing here is 190 odd record of reports. Uh, those are the re those are the requests from this country to. to so the, the American United system. States. I mean, we're really not. I'm yeah. really not capable of talking about the yeah. American system at all. Do you worry about the implications at the British end of things? I, I worry about the connections between Britain and the United States. The British system, as, as Mark Urban showed, is smaller and therefore easier to regulate. The American system is much, much larger. They not, not only harvest a lot of data, but they keep a lot of that data. A a exactly as you've said, much more difficult to oversee all that stuff. And I strongly suspect that British politicians don't know everything that the United States is doing. Does that matter? Yes, I think it does, because the I mean, so many intelligence agencies around the world share intelligence now, but the relationship between GCHQ and NSA is special. They effectively work in, certainly in some areas, as effectively one organisation. Do you believe the Foreign Secretary? Yes, I do. I think when he says that nothing has been done that's unlawful, that's correct. The problem is the law is not very transparent in the UK. And in the United States, it's put into operation by secret courts. We can't even read their judgments. So 
Mm. We're told it's lawful, but we know very little more than that. Let's talk about what should happen to this whistleblower, Mr Snowden. What do you think should happen to him, General? Well, I think if you, uh, if you serve your country, if you sign up and, and work for people who he must have known who he was working for, he must have known the sort of business he was in, he knew what the rules were and he broke them, he, he should have the book thrown at him, absolutely. Uh, because he's committed a legal uh, crime. Now, whether he's committed a moral crime is, is, is an entirely separate question. Uh, my own view is actually he should, he should uh, be pursued by the Americans and he certainly thinks he should be. What do you think should happen to him? Well, I think it, it, it shows the way that privacy is disappearing for everybody. So you know, part of this issue is about privacy for the individual, but what this person is showing is privacy is also disappearing yeah. for corporations and government. It's I, difficult to do secret stuff. I, because I don't think you're really answering the, the question. What penalty, what should befall this young man? Has he done us all a service by disclosing what's going on, or should he be punished? I think he's told you, actually. He said, ethically, I think I've done the right thing, but I've broken the law and I expect to be punished. Exactly. OK, thank you both, gentlemen, thanks. People, Millions and millions of phone call and internet records have been looked at, according to a young man who's gone public. Mark Urban has this assessment. The, legal the Foreign Secretary was unambiguous. British intelligence has not tried to get around the law by taking information from United States surveillance programmes that it would not have been able to to get authorization for in this country. He didn't give any details though, but then how could he? We shall have to take his word for it. But what has been revealed about the extent of American government snooping has astonished some. I mean, it sits them and it filters them and it analyzes them and it measures them and it stores them for periods of time simply because